Hello everyone. I'm here to give you an analysis of the latest economic report that came out last Friday. Um, the first Friday of every month, something very important happens. The Bureau of Labor Statistics publishes what they call their employment report. And basically it's a report on everything that's happening in the United States in the employment sector. And this is a very, very important set of economic indicators because so much of the economy is tied to employment. For example, in our classes, we've talked about GDP, gross domestic product, and GDP measures, sorry about that, GDP measures uh, economic activity. And the way it measures activity is it looks at output to be a representation of activity. So if the economy is doing better, that simply means we're producing more stuff. Now the question is, what would cause the economy to produce more things? Well, it's usually driven by income. When people have more money, they spend more. And when they spend more, we produce more. So what basically generates income? Jobs. So if job, jobs are being created, people earning more money, people spend more money, and then of course we produce more goods and services. So that, that's what drives the economy by and large. That's not the only thing, but it's the main driver of economic activity. So if you, one way to judge how well the economy is doing right now, and maybe how it's gonna be doing in the future, is to look at the employment sector. That's why this set of economic indicators, uh, the employment report is so important. Now there are many indicators that you know, are included in this report. What I'm going to do is I'm going to give you an overview of some of the more important set of indicators that come in this report. Now, what I want to start with is something called payroll employment. And payroll employment is in this graph right here. And by the way, what I've done here is um, I've created this dashboard and I used the uh, Federal Reserve Economic Data, FRED, right here, uh, to do it. If you want to know more on how to create a dashboard like this, uh, I'll be more than happy to, uh, to show you. But what I want to do is start with payroll employment. Now, what payroll employment is, is how many jobs were actually created on net in the last month. So the, the, the first Friday of every month, the Bureau of Labor Statistics reports on the previous month. So this was the first Friday of September. So this report is on July. And it's showing you how many jobs were created on net in July. So some jobs were lost, some jobs were gained. This just shows you what on net. And you can see this is the data point right here. And that was 130,000 jobs were created on net. Now, this was a bit of a disappointment because the expectation was for 160,000 jobs. And you could see that we... Um, some economists predicted 160,000, but the actual number was 130. And you could see I've included in this graph uh, some historical data right here. And you could see on a month-to-month -month basis, sometimes we create a lot of jobs, like we had, I don't know, right around um, February of 2018, we had over 300,000 jobs created. And then some jobs were um, very little for example, here, this is what, July, August, this is about September 2017. That was not a very good month. But what you should know about this, let me uh, erase this. I'm going to draw a line at about 160,000. Now, why am I drawing a line here? Because it's assumed that the United States needs to generate at least 160,000 jobs every month just to accommodate people coming in to the labor force. What do I mean by that? Well, think about this. If you are a stay-at-home mom or stay-at-home dad and you decide as a family that you have to get a job, you're joining the labor force, right? What if you're a college student and you graduate? Uh, when you start looking for a job for the first time, you're joining the labor force. A recent immigrant coming into the United States looking for work, they're joining the labor force. And so what, ha what we need is we need jobs for those people coming into the labor force to find work. And it's assumed that we need about 160,000 jobs for just to accommodate them, which means if we generate less than 160,000 jobs, 
you could actually see the unemployment rate go up because we have more people coming in the labor force than the jobs available for them. So that's why this 130,000 job number right here it was such a disappointment because it's below the minimum we need just to keep the unemployment rate constant. Um, and so that was a bit of a, um, a letdown. Now, let's look at another set of indicator, another indicator that's very important in this report, and that's the unemployment rate. This tends to be the most popular uh, statistic reported on this report. And the unemployment rate was at, I believe, 3.7%. And that's very low, and you can see how it's very low. Let's go back, now, do you see this gray bar right here? See this gray bar right here? That gray bar represents uh, a recession. A recession is a um, economic downturn, or in other words, a contraction in GDP or output. And you can see this recession started in December 2007 and ended in June 2009. And you can see because the economy is shrinking, the unemployment rate shot up and it hit a peak of 10%. And then after the recession ended, the recession ended right here, right? The unemployment rate started to fall. But what I want you to know is how long it took the unemployment rate to get back to its original um, position right before the recession. So this is about 4.5%. So look at this. To get to that level, it took about uh, almost eight years from here to here to get back to where it was. So that's a long time. Even though this is a nice continuous drop, it took a long time to get back to where we were before the economy started going in, uh, in a tailspin. And right now we're at 3.7%, which is a historical low. This is a very low um, unemployment rate, which is a good thing. Now let's take a look at some more economic data. I got a... Um, let me get, let me slow, scroll this down here. Okay, I moved the, um, the screen down a little bit and we have an, another set of four indicators. Now, another indicator that the uh, payroll, em the employment report monitors is average hourly earnings. Average hourly earnings basically tells you what your, what the typical employee is making on an hourly basis. And what's important is to look at it as a percentage growth. So, this is year over year. So, Basically, what we see here is the um, the pay in Ju July of this year grew at about 3.2% a year. And you can see the growth is has been improving, and that's a good thing. Uh, the downside is you could see how we were getting around 3.5% annual growth right before the recession, right? And it took a long time for the employment for wages to start growing like it did before the economic recession. That that proves that, that that helps show you how devastating this recession was in around 2008. Another employment statistic is what we call the labor force participation rate, and that shows you how, um, the percentage of the population over the age of 16. How much of them are actually participating in the labor force, meaning either they have jobs or they're looking for jobs. And you could see right before the recession, roughly 66.5% of the population over the age of 16 was pop, were participating in the labor force. And then this recession hit and it was very difficult to find work. And some people stopped looking for work. And when you stop looking for work, you stop participating in the labor force. And you could see how this is causing it to, and it continued after the recession ended. Look at the recession ended here, but people stopped participating and the percentage of the population that are participating in the labor force continued to decline. And it finally bottomed out in 2000, late 2015, early 2016. And it's been kind of constant ever since. We had a slight uptick here. You see this little point right here? 
which is a good thing, but it's um, the the kind of the troubling thing is that the, we don't have as many people participating in the labor force. Now, there are many reasons to try to explain this, one of which was this was such a terrible recession that people were discouraged and it's been difficult for them to get back into the labor force. Another is some people may be retiring early. Uh, think about the baby boom generation. The baby boom generation were born between 1946 and 1962. Oh, let me erase that. That should be a two. 62. That's the baby boom generation. And the people born in the late 40s are starting to retire. And when they retire, they drop out of the labor force. That's one reason to explain the participation rate. But what's also interesting is this graph right here is the participation rate I did over here, but over a much lar longer period of time. You can see I have 2008 to 2019 here. Here I have 1980 to 2019. But I also included the participation rate for men and for women. So the men are the red line and the women are the green line. And this is the overall number right here, the blue line. The blue line is what I have over here. And you can see here the participation rate for men in 1980 is about 77% of all men over the age of 16 were particip participating in the labor force, while only about 47% of all women. But can you see what happened over time? Women started to join the labor force. And the participation rate started to grow. And what's interesting with men, it started to slowly decline here. But much more women were coming in, and this actually increased the, the overall percentage of the um, labor force participation rate. But then you could see here this recession. This is the 2008 recession. That's this one we've been looking over here. That's what we see here. And you can see what's troubling is the steep decline in men participating in the labor force. Now, women are actually dropping too. And that's what's well, that's what caused the overall decline you see right here, right? And so this gives you an idea of how the women joining the labor force was a big, big, big factor here. Now, the final thing I want to talk about is the average duration of unemployment. Let me clean this up here so it looks a little less busy. So let's look at, uh, on average, how long does it take somebody to find work? And you can see it's rather quick. It's about 22 weeks, 22 weeks. That's how long it takes the average person to find work. When they lose a job, the average person finds job a job within 22 weeks, as opposed to when we went into this terrible recession here, you could see the time it takes to find work started to grow and it peaked at about 40 weeks. That's almost a year. It took the average person to find work and it took a long time before to get back to where it was at the end of the recession. It's still not where it was before the recession. Before the recession started, it took somebody about 17 weeks. So it's still a little bit harder to find work. So this, this gives you a nice overview of how the employment situation is. I hope you found this interesting. And again, if you have any questions about this, just email me. That's all for now.